Sandy, um, we, have, we have here an audience with people from academia, from the industry, yeah. and uh, so it's a good mix of, of people with different backgrounds. Yeah. And I think the big buzzword we have now, the ESG, not only from the requirements we have for certain companies, yeah. um, it's been around for quite a while now. Yeah. Uh, so I, I wanted to place you in this scenario because you've been You've been working in, in Macau for a while in the industry. Ah, yes. And, uh, and I wanted to hear from you as a practitioner yeah. and later on as a researcher. So tell us a little bit about yourself first as an expert. Uh, hello, nice, nice to meet every one of you. Uh, I'm Sandy. Just now, uh, Jeremy has also given an introduction on me and you say, uh, a very long one. <laughs> and for myself, I speak briefly now with, uh, my position in, uh, Institute, MICSRGC, the Macau Institute for Corporate Social Responsibility in Greater China is uh, an institute in Macau that uh, promotes corporate social responsibility in the local community and as well as uh, the region beyond, uh, such as the GBA and uh, other areas of China. And we also have some collaborations with uh, uh, other countries. For example, uh, we have been uh, working in the past Four years because our institute established in 2019. Uh, we have been uh, organizing uh, many activities such as the seminars, uh, lectures, and also forums. And we also conduct uh, various research projects on topics such as CSR, ESG, uh, sustainability, and other areas that are related to the field. And uh, recently, we have uh, more collaboration with the industry practitioners as well. Uh, from different industry, including uh, from Macau, if the uh, most obvious one is the integrated resource sector, and then we also have some collaborations with SMEs, NGOs, and so on. So, and the the institute has members from all those different areas you just mentioned, right? Uh, yes. Uh, at the start of, we are mainly a group of accounting professors. Uh, our founder, Professor Gao Shinronya, and also. Uh, one of our founding members, Professor Morris Liu in the, in the seat, and uh, myself and uh, our president, Dr. Jenny Guan from IFT, uh, a tourism professor, and we are a group of uh, core, uh, our core members are from the accounting field, and then uh, gradually we expanded uh, with other uh, professional areas such as uh, business management and uh, SME owners and also other uh, members of the society. So it's been a, a collaboration. It's The institute was created not that long ago, right? So it was... Uh, 2019, just now. So, uh, mm -hmm. It was, it's been four years at this moment. So during this, this uh, time, I know that it was more on the individual, individual gathering and knowing each other. Uh, what, what's the next step in terms of the institute for the institute collaboration with institutions? And... Uh, Previously, we have been uh, organizing uh, seminars with universities. Um, also, we have been uh, organizing some events such as forum. Uh, our first forum was in 2019 in Wind Palace, uh, which is a collaboration with uh, many uh, different universities and uh, professional organizations in ESG and also with the uh, integrated resort industry. And then, uh, Gradually, we also have some uh, research projects such as the uh, stewardship project with the Macau Rishi Institute under the uh, University of St. Joseph. Uh, we have uh, the results uh, deliberated to the public uh, earlier this year. And for our coming activity, we'll have a, a forum on biodiversity accounting, which will be uh, held in June in IFT. Oh, so I see that there yes. is... Um... So many many different topics about uh, CSR, ESG, and sustainability that will be interested and will be ongoing. Yes, I can see the collaboration between academia. Uh, in, in terms of other companies in Macau, um, I would like to ask you your perspective on, on corporate social responsibility in Macau so far, because the concept itself, for some of the entrepreneurs that are here, uh, it's, been a while for a, it's been there for a while, but now... We're connecting it to reporting, we're connecting it to accountability, we're connecting it to the company uh, evolution, strategic development. So what, what, what's this, like the landscape of the 
corporate social responsibilities, I would say in Macau at this moment. Can you share your insights in, from, a, from your perspective, not only from the Institute, but also as a researcher? Uh, for me, I think uh, for the uh, corporate social responsibility and ESG landscape in Macau is uh, generally driven by uh, the integrated resource sector at the first moment, because uh, integrated resource in Macau are the biggest entrepreneurs in Macau. <laughs> I don't know if you agree with this, <laughs> and <laughs> yes, and uh, because they are uh, the companies that are listed in Hong Kong and uh, as well as in USA, some of them, uh, they will be subject to some uh, international standards on uh, requirements by the uh, regulators, such as the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and also the uh, government, uh, especially in the new concession uh, that they. Are uh, renewed by the Macau government. The Macau government now is uh, imposing various uh, criteria on corporate social responsibility. Uh, because uh, this, for this uh, topic, uh, we use the word ESG. Actually, ESG is, uh, from my own perspective, is under the umbrella of corporate social responsibility (CSR). Uh, because uh, ESG, uh, environmental, social, and governance is. Uh, are three of the areas under the umbrella of CSR. Because CSR, uh, from my perspective and from the inst from our institute's perspective, it will uh, include uh, various different areas, such as philanthropy and also some uh, theoretical perspectives that uh, you may be interested or the audience may, may be interested also, but uh, we'll uh, talk about more on the practical side in, at this moment. And I think, uh, with the drive of the integrated resource uh, compliance with the uh, existing ESG standards, uh, different industries in Macau that collaborate with them uh, are also uh, undertaking the responsibilities of uh, CSR and ESG in their uh, daily operations. And also now, because there are more and more uh, entrepreneurs in Macau that start their own business, uh, because under the uh, business climate that uh, for innovation and development in terms of some uh, niche industry sectors such as uh, AI, finance and that are uh, evolving in Macau and I see that they will have uh, more and more awareness and also they uh, are willing to take the uh, responsibility to uh, undergo some ESG activities in their operations and also in their corporate strategies. So you see, if we enlarge a little bit the, the scope of our conversation mm. to the Greater Bay Area, uh, yes. and, and, and having in consideration the last, uh, um, well, the guidelines we have, not only locally from the Macau government, but also uh, uh, from the 14 five-year plan, mm. um, there, is a, there are uh, specific guidelines, I would say, or principles ah. that aim at developing CSR in this uh, broad area. You want to share something more? in terms of the Greater Bay Area? Uh, for the Greater Bay Area, I think, uh, because now in Macau, uh, not only in the Greater Bay Area, I think uh, in the uh, uh, provinces beyond Greater Bay Area or China, uh, they have been uh, following the guidelines from the uh, China central government. Uh, because the central government has, uh, just as you mentioned, the uh, 14 five year plan, and also they have the uh, 20th Congress last year, and uh, they have been uh, many policy documents and speeches from uh, President Xi that have uh, addressed on the topics that or expectations that uh, their government have been uh, trying to uh, deliver to the public, to the uh, companies and uh, to the communities in China, uh, Greater Bay Area, and then uh, down to Macau that. Uh, such as the uh, 2060, I don't know if you have heard of it, is the uh, double carbon goals in China. Uh, for example, they uh, are expecting to reach the carbon peak of, in the country by 2030, which uh, they will be uh, making their carbon emission at set at the maximum level. And then uh, for the next carbon goal will be the 2060, which is to reach carbon neutrality in China. And with this uh, carbon policies, they uh, they have been uh, working on some uh, fields that are trying to uh, reduce carbon emission. Uh, for example, the uh, new forms of energy, which you can see in Macau, many uh, 
travel agencies and uh, integrated resorts already uh, taking uh, electronic vehicles and then uh, they will invest in some solar energy and uh, also natural gases. Uh, for this, you can see that uh, they are already implementing in our everyday life because uh, even in the local households, we are already uh, having the uh, electricity and natural gas more to be replaced by the traditional fossil fuels because of these carbon goals. And the next thing is uh, for China, they also emphasize on the uh, poverty alleviation. Uh, I don't know if you have heard of this also. <laughs> and because uh, in last year, the uh, mainland China government, they have uh, announced that they have already uh, elevated poverty uh, in the country's general level. Uh, so there may be some areas that in the country that uh, are still may need some further assistance. Uh, Overall, the people in the country are already at a level that they have uh, already have well being in their life. And this is uh, also counting on the support of some uh, companies in Macau, I know, as far as I know, because uh, there are uh, quite a lot of enterprises in Macau that have been already supporting on projects such as the uh, low area development in mainland China, because uh, it is also one of the uh, important corporate social responsibility goals. And they also have uh, this performance reported in the uh, ESG reports. Uh, you can see from the uh, ESG reports of many companies in Macau and also uh, the enterprises in uh, Hong Kong and mainland China. Yes, yeah, so, so you mentioned the ESG reporting, which some of the uh, uh, members here in the audience, they are pretty well acquainted with that uh, and the importance of that reporting, not only for the uh, stakeholders, uh, shareholders, and, and the importance of having this reporting. Uh, and I've read uh, on those reports, part of the, the mission that they have uh, established for the next years is the, a strong collaboration with the local uh, small and medium enterprise. Can you uh, share something of what, from your experience, what do you see that's happening in this collaboration between the integrated resorts we have here as an example? And uh, small and medium enterprises, local. Okay, okay sure. Uh, from my experience in the industry and also uh, from my experience in terms of our research on uh, ESG reporting, uh, it is obvious that uh, the integrated resource sector have already uh, been putting efforts on collaboration with uh, SMEs. Uh, because SMEs now uh, actually accounted for over 90% of Macau's uh, business volumes. and uh, for many companies, they are working with SMEs because uh, SMEs are the local, they uh, interact directly with the local citizens uh, because they have the day-to-day uh, -day operations and they also have some uh, products and services that they uh, can encounter the daily lives of uh, everyday life. And then uh, by supporting SMEs, uh, integrated resource can enjoy the benefits such as uh, they can have the closer interaction with their uh, customer groups because uh, the local citizens, they will uh, feel that they have the belongingness because they support the local business sectors and then uh, they will be more willing to uh, support the businesses of the big enterprises also. And for uh, other areas like uh, uh, feel that they are working with the uh, SMEs, they will be able to uh, obtain the support from, because Macau is a uh, community that uh, may be heavy, more heavily relying on the uh, close ties between uh, different individual members of the societies and also some uh, society groups, associations. And with the interaction with SMEs, they are able to uh, build connections uh, in niches so that uh, they will be able to build a closer ties with those associations and uh, local groups in the society. So the SMEs are very particular on their structure, their adaptability, and their uh, their uniqueness in each area. But also at the same time, they face challenges when we talk about uh, corporate social responsibility, in this case, social responsibility for SME. Um, some of these challenges can become opportunities as well for Macau at this moment. 
leveraging on what we already know of, of what's being done in other parts of the world for SMEs. What do you see, for instance, the Institute doing with SME, local SMEs to promote uh, uh, social responsibility and to work with them uh, in the future? Uh, for our institute, we have some uh, research projects with uh, SMEs uh, in the past. For example, uh, we have worked with the uh, Macau Rishi Institute of the uh, University of St. Joseph, which I have mentioned just now. Uh, actually, uh, it was a research project uh, on conducting studies related to the uh, DSL practices uh, between uh, large corporations, how they uh, interact with the uh, local communities in Macau, such as the grassroots citizens, uh, the SMEs, as well as the NGOs. At that time, we have an uh, interview with some uh, SME practitioners, uh, because some of our, mem our institute's members are also uh, practitioners in SMEs. At that time, we understood uh, they had some difficulties, especially at that time, it was during the COVID pandemic, and uh, they have been facing challenges, such as uh, they have some shortage of labor because at that time Macau was uh, locked down and foreign people will have uh, restrictions coming over Macau at that time. And then uh, there are also some uh, difficulties such as financial constraints because uh, we have also uh, members addressing on the financial areas in terms of uh, ESG support because uh, for SMEs, they at that time, they uh, often faced difficulties in uh, getting additional capital for their business expansion. And uh, by then, uh, because we see that uh, how big companies uh, like Integrated Resort and other uh, sectors in Macau can uh, could help the SMEs at that time, is that uh, they're able to work with some financial institutions, such as uh, banks and uh, other companies, that they will uh, offer some direct financial assistance and also some... Uh, other forms of assistance such as uh, human capital support because uh, large companies they usually have a stronger team of professionals that they can help SMEs to deal with their uh, challenges in terms of their business operations and also their uh, financial and other uh, tangible forms of resources. So, so uh, um, and in terms of um, the future of uh, uh, social responsibility in SMEs, we already get uh, a broad range of options for these companies, small and medium enterprises. And well, we all know, uh, the audience knows what we went through during the pandemic and the support that was given. In terms of um, specific resources to look at social responsibility, and because the title is What's in it for me, uh, it has to do also with probably some of the audience members. They are entrepreneurs and they probably want to know where to start? What kind of support could the Institute provide? Uh, for us uh, and also for myself, because uh, we are uh, somehow we, we are trained with uh, uh, corporate social responsibility knowledge and also you and as maybe you are from other research fields originally, but uh, by now, uh, we, if, when we uh, have been uh, exposed to the environment that have been talking about ESG, CSR, and other uh, sustainability-related concepts. Uh, over the time, we have been uh, equipped myself and others about the knowledge on uh, proper social responsibility and uh, ESG factors. And I think at that at this moment, we can uh, further extend our knowledge to uh, the ESG to the wider audience. Uh, for example, uh, in our Upcoming goals, we are going to uh, extend our uh, knowledge on ESG to the uh, SME practitioners in terms we, we can uh, establish projects that uh, collaborate with SMEs uh, in terms of some uh, te uh, technical support and also some uh, support in terms of uh, delivering them the knowledge how they can uh, integrate some ESG areas that are used to be adopted by uh, large companies, such as the uh, ESG reporting guidelines. Uh, actually, uh, for SMEs, they may not be able to uh, conduct the reporting, but there are reporting guidelines, there are some principles that they can take reference to, such as uh, sustainable procurement. They will uh, buy something from the uh, sustainable suppliers. And then, uh, like the uh, 
training and development, how they can uh, try to use a more uh, scientific and also uh, some uh, formal, more formal ways to uh, keep track of the uh, training and development to their employees. And also, uh, for example, some community investment projects, uh, they can also benchmark to some uh, established companies uh, in Macau and also in the Greater Bay Area and beyond, uh, like uh, international standards, uh, GRI, and also the SDGs of the United Nations Sustain, uh, Sustainable Development Goals, which uh, they can take reference to, uh, to strengthen their uh, input in terms of the education and employee well-being and now we are going to ex also extend our uh, ESG education project to school children because uh, we see that uh, it is important for the community to get rich to the concept of uh, CSR and ESG from childhood and actually we found that uh, in our research we found that uh, some school children uh, a small part has already been exposed to the uh, SDG, the 17 goals of the United Nations, how they can live by their own example that uh, to achieve sustainability in their daily life and to the wider community. And we see that it is a good opportunity to further extend this uh, sustainability education to a wider group of stakeholders, including uh, some uh, other school students that uh, they may not be uh, usually able to get the knowledge from the curriculum and we try to uh, educate the educators actually educate the educators so that uh, they will be able to uh, think over and how to integrate the ESG education in terms of the uh, curriculum starting at the uh, beginning level and then further extend to high school universities uh, because universities already now uh, are more widespread with the uh, sustainability education we believe so uh, we will uh, for our institute we will further strengthen our effort in this area uh, to let them reach a high level of uh, professional ac academic research for so, the so university we level so, and you mentioned, well, a moderator usually has to kind of paraphrase. <laughs> so you mentioned in terms of the landscape of Macau, CSI, what's going on in terms of the integrated resorts and how they collaborate with the local SMEs. And now you actually increase a broad range of, uh, I would say, uh, support that the Institute can provide from uh, small and medium enterprises to schools, uh, educators. Um, but then how can they, so if we have someone in the audience that would like to start something, I have a small company or I have a small school, yeah. and I want to start the CSR initiative, um, what kind of would be the first steps they could think about? Uh, actually, first, the first step uh, just now I mentioned is uh, because there are many people in the community already uh, been exposed to some uh, preliminary ideas of ESG, such as uh, when they see the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals because uh, they this is the uh, well that I very think is the uh, fundamental of uh, some mm -hmm. areas in terms of ESG because uh, ESG there are some environmental uh, objectives and social goals which are already covered in the uh, SDGs therefore uh, we see SDGs as a uh, starting point that uh, from children to uh, practitioners from uh, entrepreneurs that they all can take reference to. Right. Um, I think uh, and, in terms <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. And also uh, our institute will, uh, will also offer some uh, research and research findings and some uh, activities to support uh, various stakeholders, including the SMEs, uh, the large companies, uh, and also for the uh, schools, children, uh, different walks of life that uh, we can also design projects and programs for them to uh, fulfill these uh, areas in terms of social, environmental and also the uh, economic well-being of the uh, different people in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. I don't know if the audience wants to ask uh, any questions. We've been going on a roll, that means... <laughs> Yes, please.
from time to time, I would look at the audience, actually, better position this mic. Correctly. Yes. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you both for being here and to bring a different light on ESG, because most of the time ESG is about reporting and the economic aspect of businesses. And you are giving a different view how it actually relates to the community. Now, I have some concerns with ESG in general, um, but I want to talk about the practical side. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Hengxin is part of the Greater Bay Area, correct? Yes. I was fortunate to go to Hengxin to visit how things are over there. And the difference between Hengxin, I know it's only small, it's in pure development, oh. and in Macau, it's like a different world. Now, it looks like when you start from zero, like in Hengxin, creating a greener platform and environment, some gardens, recycling, a whole system. And when you have an existing city like Macau, who would try to make a change, why is there not a better cooperation between the change that happened in Xin and really make the connection without any walls between Xin and Macau so that resolves and other SMEs can implement some of the HPSGs and ECSR SDGs on a, on, a, on a better, better, in a better, better way, because Macau is limited to what it can do. And she is well, enormous compared with Macau. I don't understand the, 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 the wall between the, the relationship between Macau and Xi. Why is there not more openness, more freedom to do things together and allow certain projects to, you know, happen more in Xi, the cooperation with Macau, for example, the waste. And she has a very good waste management system. Yes. Macau is kind of struggling, but apparently there is no way to bring the same concept or from Hinshin to Macau, or the opposite waste to Hinshin because of the legislation. Why is not ASG not promoted in that level so that the connection between the two is more open and easier for everyone? Yes, thank you for your for your sharing and your and your uh, insights. Uh, for me, I think uh, because, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Macau is in maybe somehow they are constrained because of their uh, land area and their resources are uh, relatively uh, limited compared to Hengqing. Because uh, in Hengqing, they have a wide area of land and they have already uh, built up some uh, resources such as the waste management system, as you also mentioned. Uh, but for myself, I haven't have chance to get there to visit yet <laughs> but I but I have uh, heard of it and also uh, saw some uh, sources uh, talking about these uh, areas and also the initiatives that have been uh, undertaken by the Hanshin community. Actually uh, there are quite some of them uh, as far as I know is uh, developed by uh, some Macau community groups uh, going to Hanshin because uh, as now the policy is uh, getting closer ties between Macau and Hengqin with the establishment of the uh, cooperation zone. And then uh, we also, actually, we also see this as an opportunity for Macau to uh, borrow the resources from Hengqin uh, in terms of land and also the uh, capacity of development. Because uh, in Macau, we are already quite closely packed with uh, different types of uh, business and uh, community uh, facilities in Macau already and they, uh, in order to, uh, for Macau companies and uh, no matter big or small to further develop their business scale and also uh, to build a space that have a better living standard, they will uh, need to take the, this opportunity to uh, expand their physical resources and also their, uh, trying to expand their capital investment in Hang Chin so that uh, they will be able to uh, go further to uh, work on the uh, ESG, uh, CSR areas such as uh, environmental, environmental management and also uh, for uh, better social living and also for the uh, opportunities to achieve a bigger business growth in terms of uh, economic uh, income. So uh, I'll see for Hang Chin, it is a uh, valuable uh, piece of resources that uh, Macau communities and no matter business or non-business, they can uh, take this uh, benefit to further develop themselves in terms of uh, pursuing the uh, ESG objectives. And yes, then, would yeah. you have any 
Uh, I'd, I'd like, I'd like to address the question. The institute, yes. It's quite difficult. <laughs> the question is why, right? Uh, uh, and and with, we all know several reasons from our personal experience. And uh, by living here, I live here for 23 years, so I've seen everything happening on the other side. Um, there's a gap, it's true. And, and it, it brings the, us to another set of questions we can ask. But that gap actually can be a, a reason uh, to look further, as Sandy is explaining. Uh, and by having that gap, the collaboration is actually fostered between the two sides. There's a reason for that, and that's the gap is a reason. I, I think the speed at which uh, this will happen, uh, not necessarily for Western Western <laughs> perspectives, for Westerners' perspectives, okay? Uh, and we've seen in Europe um, this urge to move in and to comply first with ESG reporting and social responsibility uh, with um, advantages and disadvantages. So sometimes the pace of which we do these changes uh, um, doesn't allow us to incorporate these uh, gaps and difference we know. Yes. And and and, oh, and and that brings me to a question that I'd like to share with the audience with you, which is. We haven't touched base with any regulatory framework or if, if there's room to anything that could push the agenda forward. Uh, not, I'm not saying adding to the existing already, um, uh, regulatory framework that we have specific for each business, but what could be added in terms of, from your perspective, that would by one side, uh, bridge the gap that we're just talking about? Punching and Macau and on the other side, locally talking about Macau and the local SMEs. What kind of regulatory framework we could? Uh, from my perspective, I think, uh, the regulatory framework is, uh, actually, uh, quite mobilized because, uh, as we can see from the recent development in Macau and the Greater Bay area, uh, the regulatory framework actually evolves over time, uh, since the uh, China government announced the uh, uh, GBA outline, uh, which announced that they are uh, aiming to develop Guangdong, Hong Kong, and Macau as a cluster of cities called the Greater Bay Area. At that time, they uh, have established some goals uh, or in terms of the uh, social development uh, to achieve the uh, overall uh, well-being standards and also the uh, development such as uh, green green uh, finance, green tourism, and uh, environmental development. Uh, they have some guidelines in their policy papers. And uh, this policy, uh, these policy papers actually uh, keep uh, refreshing over time as uh, the central government, they have some new goals and uh, some new expectations in terms of their uh, objectives towards the business areas and also for the uh, common stakeholders. And actually, uh, in Macau, we uh, have been uh, following the policies in mainland over the past years. And for now, uh, as there are more companies that have been uh, reaching out to the uh, international markets, such as the uh, Portuguese-speaking countries, uh, the European countries, and also in the Americas, because uh, in this country, they have been adopting some international standards that uh, just now we have also mentioned, such as the uh, global reporting initiatives and uh, also some uh, responsible investment uh, criteria that have been uh, required in the Western world. And uh, for now, Macau is uh, more and more getting embraced with some uh, Western standards and also they are finding ways to uh, try to uh, conglomerate with the uh, government policies in the mainland China, how they can uh, cater both the China government's policy with the uh, Western world's uh, expectations. And this is one of the uh, areas that Macau is potentially developing in terms of uh, creating their own paradigm of uh, ESG that we are foreseeing. Oh, so in, ter in terms of creating that paradigm, um, because I, I just want to uh, kind of uh, mention an example from Europe. So uh, when I start working, uh, food safety was of concern. 
and Europe created the, what was called first the Green Book, uh, and then the White Book. And uh, I remember when I started working in the food industry, everyone was asking the same question. Uh, there's a gap. Why don't we actually start doing something about food safety? It took around uh, almost a decade to move from EU, so from the White Book, uh, to a white paper, and then European legislation that then was harmonized through different areas, to the different countries of the EU members, into the local legislation. It took around 10 years. So, this is to say, I, I do see, and the same applies to other types of accreditations that are seen to be beneficial to certain reasons. So it is a process that actually takes time. Um, in, in your perspective, what the Institute is doing, it will speed up also the process. I mean, the Institute is not a huge organization. It's uh, out of the goodwill of the members as well and the time they can share. But uh, uh, what other institutes could merge together with the current Institute and other organizations could actually uh, create a faster place of implementation? of this uh, social responsibility in this area. Uh, what are the institutions you see that could collaborate? Yes. Uh, actually, our institute have been collaborating with uh, different organizations uh, worldwide. Uh, recently, we have been uh, collaborating with an uh, Extension Accounting Association in the UK. Uh, extension Accounting may be, uh, many people are not familiar with this because uh, we are going to organize a uh, forum about biodiversity accounting because uh, biodiversity is uh, one of the major issues that we uh, see in the future that more and more uh, companies may need to be aware of. Uh, because uh, just now we have mentioned there are some uh, carbon neutrality goals in uh, Macau and China. And actually this is a, low, uh, a goal from the global uh, field because uh, Globally, uh, now we have the COP. Uh, not sure if you have heard of it because uh, this is a Congress that addressed on the uh, issue of climate change because uh, under the Paris Agreement uh, that uh, imposed by the United Nations and uh, uh, member states, the goal is to reduce the temperature rise in the world uh, from 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. And actually, this goal is uh, trying to keep the Next generation have a planet that is sustainable to live in because uh, climate change is one of the critical issues that uh, humankind is facing. And in this term, we, our institute, are trying to uh, collaborate with some uh, institutions in the uh, Western countries because uh, the goal is uh, more initiative from the Western countries at the first site and then uh, trying to. They are trying to extend from the uh, Eastern world in China and because uh, China now is also getting popular with these uh, climate goals. And our institute is uh, working on these projects to uh, further explore and develop how to uh, apply this in the Macau context. That's why we are uh, trying to uh, going deeper research into this area. And it also uh, sticks to the one of a uh, few of the goals that are related to the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, which uh, to protect the wildlife and also uh, to combat the climate change. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, I'm mindful of time, and yes. uh, everyone here is already sometimes looking at the work. We will so, see if there are further questions from the floor or. Yeah, yes, uh, and uh, do uh, they can do approach you yes. and exchange cards and connect with you in the institute if you want further information. Uh, I don't know if the audience. To struggle with this mic. I don't know if in the audience we have any more questions. Because good morning, bonjour, um, Morris from uh, also MICSRGC. Uh, we think that our enterprises and our integrated resorts, uh, hotels, and uh, SMEs are making good progress. Good, good progress to um, fulfilling their to, to fulfill their social responsibilities. But I think that if our consumers are willing to be more socially responsible to our society environment, our enterprise won't mind doing even more. Um, I think I've listened attentively uh, to Sandy. Uh, there have been quite a lot of uh, uh, programs to educate our school children and university students. 
Uh, how about our adults? Should we do more to educate our adults uh, who are uh, <laughs> more in their age? If they are willing to do more, uh, then maybe the whole society will be um, more, um, you know, responsible to not only to the environment, but also to the far future of our society as well. Thank you, Morris. Actually, our our activities is uh, mainly focused on adults. Uh, for the school children, it is one of our new targets that we are going to explore. And uh, actually, we are on the way of uh, planning for this. Actually, for adults, we have been over our past four years, because we have established four years, we have been uh, uh, organizing activities that have covered, uh, I cannot say uh, a majority of the cow population, but uh, because our activities are conducted both offline and online, and we have uh, reached out to uh, quite a vast majority of population in the uh, local community as well as in the community beyond Macau, uh, such as uh, the online audience in our partner institutions from uh, different countries. Because uh, just now I've mentioned we have been collaborating with uh, institutions from UK actually, and we also have some. Uh, from other European countries and uh, also from the uh, different uh, Australia also we have some uh, collaborations with partners in these countries therefore uh, we are trying to uh, go further to extend our work on uh, different vast majority and also different nations and uh, not only breakfast talk to, like today or forums that we are uh, organizing and we have also uh, some industrial projects, for example, we are uh, also uh, seeing how uh, business organizations have gaps in terms of uh, their ESG knowledge and uh, project development and our institute will be uh, able to extend our uh, research and also our uh, resources effort on getting how they can implement in their daily operations and also uh, in the daily lives of each of us as individuals. Well, thank you, Sandy. Um, I think we, it's a wrap at this moment. I appreciate the questions we have from the audience, and of course we can continue to interact afterwards. Um, sure. I want to thank the French Chamber of Commerce for the opportunity, and uh, Jeremy for your introduction.